from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE, covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back in the Windy City. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with Stu Miniman. This is our second day of covering Veeam On 2018. Second year of theCUBE at Veeam On. Danny Allen is here as the Vice President of Product Strategy at Veeam. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you again. Thank you, very excited to be here. Loved the keynote yesterday, gave a lot of detail. Um, the bumper sticker, the summary on your product strategy. How would you summarize your product strategy? It is to be the most comprehensive intelligent data management platform that meets the demands of the enterprise. So when you say intelligent data management, uh, people hear that, they don't, certainly don't go immediately to backup and, and data protection, so you've expanded that notion of what you guys do. There's a TAM expansion there as well, which yes. is great. What do you guys mean by intelligent data management? So, I believe it's a journey, first of all, right? And it starts with backup and replication. I know that there are vendors that are saying, hey, this is a new world, completely different. You know what, the cornerstone of this is still backup and replication. So that is the first stage on this journey. But we believe that right now, especially the customers I'm talking to, they're, they're deploying things on the public cloud, they're deploying things in SaaS clouds, it's all over the place, it's growing, it's sprawling trying to get their hands around it. And so they have to do that first as the next step. And then it's an evolution beyond that. To, okay, now I understand it. Now let me do something with it. Let me actually drive the business to better outcomes. So some things we know, or we believe anyway, that, mm -hmm. that, that data protection and orchestration are moving up on the list of priorities for CXOs. That, that's, I think, very clear. You, you would agree. Yes. But there's a dichotomy that exists between the perception from the business side as to what can be done in terms of data protection, particularly with regard to the degrees of automation mm -hmm. and what IT today can deliver. Mm -hmm. So there's tension there and there's frankly lots of opportunity for churn. When you talk to people about, okay, are you going to switch data protection vendors um, as you go to this you know, digitization, multi-cloud, or are you wed to them? And they go, no, we're totally open. We have an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's good news for you guys. Yes. So thinking about those trends, how do you take advantage from a product standpoint? Well, Veeam has been known, I always talk about three words, it just works. People love us because <laughs> the software works and it's reliable. And so that's the starting point in all of this. The, the opportunity, I believe, is in that it just works. And so if we take them through this journey towards intelligent data management, every step has to be about it just works. In some ways, the step from uh, stage one to stage two, which is aggregating data, is at an infrastructure level. As you get to the later stages of three, four, or five, it's, it just works at a business level. And so our focus is still going to be on that simplicity, reliability, making sure the platform works. So I want to follow up on that, because it, it just works, obviously is going to re resonate with the IT pro, mm -hmm. who's got to deal with failed backups, with, with poor reporting, with, with lousy recovery, blah, you know, slow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, getting pounded because they're losing data. <laughs> We all know that thankless world. But in terms of the business side, there's billions of dollars being left on the table by businesses in the Fortune 1000 because they have inadequate data protection uh, processes, procedures, architectures. Um, not, I mean, they're becoming aware of it, but what's the above the line message? So it just works. How do you crack through that billions of dollars of opportunity and get CFOs to open up the wallet? That is the great opportunity for you guys, we think. It is, so they, they have challenges in a number of areas, right? Compliance, security, regulatory. We, we don't talk to executives at the C-level and hear them say, oh, I need backup, I need replication. <laughs> right, right. They're saying, reduce my costs. Well, if you can leverage It Just Works and, and deploy this in a way that requires lef, less FTEs, that makes it simpler to do it, that can give them attestation, proof that, hey, I can fail over to the public cloud, I can burst up to the public cloud or to a managed cloud, if I can give that fluidity, that's an it just works at an ROI perspective. Or, uh, we talk about intelligent data management and sometimes, I'll be honest, I roll my eyes when I hear artificial intelligence. And that's not because it's not real, it's because what we haven't done is taken it just works and applied it to the business. So, an example of this, forget artificial intelligence for a moment, one of the examples I give is, if you see malware crossing the network, that is a really good time to do something. Let's leverage that intelligence to provide an outcome. And that's an it just works at the business level rather than at the 
infrastructure level. Mm. Yeah. All right, so, so Danny, I love the message, it's any data, any app across any cloud. Yes. We, ha we have these pesky little things called like physics and data gravity <laughs> and the like. So, you know, protecting and you know, getting access to my data in the public cloud versus the edge with, you know, the, where we're going to see you know, 90 plus percent of the data yes. uh, in, in the future versus my traditional data center and service providers in the SaaS. It's a complicated world. How do you make it that simple? Well, <laughs> so let me expand our benefits into a third area. So Veeam took off in that it was easy to use, it was reliable, but the second one is the portability and the agnostic system of the platform. You didn't need media servers, it was all self-describing. Uh, backup things, VBKs or VIBs, without trying to get too technical here. That self-describing capability allows us to move between infrastructures. In some ways, what VMware did at the hardware level, they decoupled the workload from the physical server. We're decoupling the workload from the infrastructure on which it sits because it's this self-describing, very portable format that enables fluidity of movement. All right, so I haven't heard much about Edge yet. Is that, is that a place that you expect Veeam to have a play? Yes, and I expect we have to do that. And the reason is because a lot of the computing now is happening out at the edge and you want to make your actions out at the edge. There's this concept in the US Air Force called the OODA loop. Observe, orient, decide, and act. And yep. you would try and act out on the edge. But my belief is that um, data protection systems will do some of that protection out on the edge, but sometimes they won't know what to do. And so the information will be sent back to the cloud or sent back to the core to make a better business decision on what should we do with this data. When you think about your, your platform, um, we were talking to Peter McKay about you'd gone and gone from a product company to a platform company. Uh, we talked about that a little bit, but I wonder if we could dig into it more from a standpoint of you know, your role as you know, head of product strategy. Um, what does platform mean? Where do you see that platform going? Can you share a little roadmap with us? Platform to me has kind of three connotations to it. One is that you have the capabilities within the platform that are very broad, and we believe we have that. We can cover physical, virtual cloud, we have orchestration, we have reporting, we have all of those capabilities. The second, though, is comprehensive APIs. You need to have the extensibility in a platform that you can actually talk to the ecosystem of partners. And that's actually the third area. It's being able to work with your Cisco's and your NetApps and your HPE's and all of our partners to deliver these better outcomes. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, I, last year, Stu, when we saw uh, uh, Veeam and, the, and sort of the introduction of that, those capabilities, I noted that, I remember the ascendancy of, of, of EMC back in the day, they did a really good job of connecting to everything that was out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's integration work. They just get, got, went in and rolled up their sleeves and did it's the dirty work. a lot of work. work, Dave. I've got the scars living in <laughs> the interrupt lab, and so. And you guys do that dirty work so that, it, and every time you do that, it expands your total available yes. market. And, and it, I don't want to say it's unique in the business, but you seem to have an aptitude to do it with, without it appearing to be such a heavy lift to the, to the marketplace. Why is that? Well, it's, Frankly, it's a scalability thing. We're an almost $1 billion company. This year we should cross a billion dollars in bookings. And if you want to scale to add more and more partners, you take our storage integrations, for example, we were doing maybe one a year for a few years. And we recognize all these vendors knocking on our door saying, hey, give us that capability. And so we've added just in the last six months, IBM, Lenovo, Infinidat, Pure. The only way you can do that is to have a consistent API framework mm -hmm. that people can plug into. Right. It's the way we scale. Right, well, I mean, but you know, again, I look at a company like VMware, when we, we saw all the sort of integration challenges that they went through and the limited resources that they had, you remember, and it was, a, and the cartel got the, the SDKs first, and it <laughs> took forever to get the integrations done. A year later, you might see some function. It just seems like you guys have you know, some kind of good process internally to actually make this stuff work. <laughs> we're the largest small company you've ever met. We, we're really agile internally. It's, it helps us to respond to the customer requests. They come to us and say, hey, I want this, I want this, I want this. If we can't respond to that quickly, we'll never be successful. D D Danny, just wondering if you could expand a little bit on the, the cloud opportunity. Should we be looking to see more cloud services out of Veeam as you kind of layer on uh, what, what's happening? You had the acquisition a year ago. and. Unquestionably, so I say 2017 was the year of agents. We added support for physical and for cloud, but through agents. I tell everyone that, that 2018 is really the year of the cloud for us. We started the year by acquiring N2W software, but last week, for example, it, it's not even making huge you know, PR announcements. We just released version two of Backup for Office 365, which adds OneDrive and SharePoint support. Um, and you'll see in the next release of our product, Anton has a breakout session on this today, another huge capability around not just 
integrating with the cloud, but, but actually integrating in a way that provides business value. I'm a big believer in you don't just put a checkbox in, you know, I support cloud, I can send things to the cloud. It's how do I actually use the cloud in a way that delivers business outcomes? So this year actually, 2018 is about cloud for Veeam. So that's, I want to follow up on that because as an observer of this industry for a long time, there seems to be sort of two philosophies and you just laid out yours. You're not a big believer in checkboxes, but I've seen it, you're old company. We got every feature, and they would take the salesforce and we have this, they don't, headlock, buy it. <laughs> um, so you're not trying to, to do the checkbox game, you're trying to map business value to, or your, your features to, to, and, and capabilities to business value for the customer. Yes. And that's how you sell and, and emphasize in your sales motions? Yes. So this is a, somewhat of a controversial statement, but, also, but we sometimes say we won't be first to market with a feature, we'll be first to market with a solution. So you can come out with, for example, sending things to object storage in the cloud, and, and if you're sending up a one gigabyte object, that is a to totally, you're not going to leverage that in the real world, right. right? But if you deliver that in a way that actually is effective, then you can leverage the cloud as a tool because the cloud is not a destination for most of these enterprises. It's a tool in their toolbox that they use to solve a problem. So mm -hmm. we're all about solving those problems. Excellent. All right, Danny, thanks so much for coming back in theCUBE. We'll give you a last word on, uh, on Veeam, uh, Veeam on 2018 and, and, and maybe give us a little preview of what we can expect. Well, we're really excited to be here. The most exciting thing to me is, is the recognition, the conversations with customers about this journey mm -hmm. towards intelligent data management. As you, as you said, most customers are in stage one, stage two, but for us, this is a partnership. This isn't us just giving software. This is talking to customers, talking to partners, making them successful. All right, well, hey, congratulations on a great show and, and all the success, and, and thanks for coming to theCUBE. Thank you very much, to happy to be here. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest, from Chicago, theCUBE, Veeamon 2018. We'll be right back.